Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Today we're going to go over this article in regards to the Tibetan Plateau and some of the detailed analysis that has largely updated the genetic landscape of the area in terms of not only archaic humans, but also the much later and much more recent um, influx of Homo sapiens. Uh, First off, let's talk about the Tibetan Plateau itself. It's the highest and largest above sea level, which is about 4,000 meters high. It's cold and arid conditions for most of the year. It's about two and a half million square kilometers and is home to about seven million Tibetan and Sherpa ethnic groups, which we'll uh, get into toward the end of this video. And, And one thing to note is that there were Denisovans present on the northeastern regions of the plateau by at least 160,000 years, give or take, based on the information that is in the record now. Also, early modern humans appeared on the central plateau about 40,000 years ago. Up until now, there's been a huge lack of understanding of their history and origins of uh, human settlement in the area. And the sampling of the DNA from ancient humans was limited to a thin slice of the southwestern part of the plateau in the Himalayas. So up until very recently, that was the information that we were working with essentially. So let's look at the actual genome sequencing. There were 89 ancient humans sampled dating back to 5,100 years ago. So about 3,100 BC, all from 29 archeological sites spanning the plateau. And some of the findings that were uncovered here included, well, the big one is that the ancient humans living across the plateau share one single origin. So one single population uh, seeded the entire uh, area. So this single uh, population was an admixture of Northern East Asian population and a deeply diverged yet unsampled human population. So that is one of the biggest breakthroughs that came of this this uh, paper. This pattern is also found in populations prior to the arrival of domesticated crops on the plateau. So we're talking about a very, very ancient uh, source population here. Another thing to note is that the introduction of northern East Asian ancestry to the plateau populations occurred before barley and wheat was introduced. And this was not associated with migrating wheat and barley agriculturalists, which came much later. Um, There are some other comparisons here. Uh, So one comparison revealed the distinct genetic patterns prior to 2,500 years ago, which indicates that there were three very different Tibetan populations that occupied these regions. One occupied the northeast, one the the central and southern portion Uh, of the plateau and then the other uh, the southern and southwestern regions of the plateau which was the part of the plateau that had prior to this paper was only limited to this region so as a result they found that there were different population dynamics so uh, the northeastern populations younger than 4700 years ago show an influx of an additional northern east asian ancestry in lower elevation regions, namely the Ganghu Basin. So interestingly enough, this influx is not observed in the higher elevation populations, which could lead all, to all kinds of reasons that people will speculate about. So this, there was another uh, network of humans that lived along the Yarlung Sangpo River, and they had shared ancestry that was found in the south and southwestern populations as well. And between these two groups, they also, uh, the central populations of these two groups shared another ancestry that differed from those further north and south. So then, so what we're looking at here is there's a source population in the remote past that came to the Tibetan Plateau. And then there have been subsequent waves of other genetics that came in and mixed with this initial population. That's what they're saying here. 
So the present day Tibetans and Sherpas have heavy influences from lowland East Asian populations, which indicates a very recent migration around 800 years ago to about 1200 years ago. And so what about the Denisovan high altitude gene, EPAS1? Uh, this likely originated from a past admixture event with archaic humans and uh, known as Denisovans. Uh, humans from this study show archaic ancestry typical of lowland East Asians, but the oldest individual, which was 5,100 uh, years ago, had that adaptive uh, variant, this uh, high altitude gene. So the arrival of this variant occurred had to have occurred before uh, 5,100 years ago in the ancestral seed population that contributed to all the subsequent plateau populations. So thus, there's a Tibetan lineage that dates back over 5,100 years ago that brought this gene in at some point. And then uh, these three regional groups mer uh, started merging around 2,500 years ago. So again, this is the largest study of ancient genetics on the Tibetan plateau to date. Future sampling is still needed. The origin of the unsampled, deeply diverged ancestry found in all plateau populations is still unaccounted for. But they, so it's almost like this ghost genome situation, except they they know a little bit more about uh, where this uh, source uh, population came from. Um, and it also remains to be seen when and where the high altitude gene, the EPAS1 allele, first entered the ancestral Tibetan population. So anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think about this. What else do you guys know about Tibet? Um, Tibetan Buddhism, and, and even before Buddhism, there are uh, more ancient religion called Bon, B-O-N. They, they have some interesting parallels with some of the surrounding uh, uh, religions in, in some of the neighboring geographical areas, such as in India and parts of Afghanistan and such. So um, anyway, uh, let me know what you guys think. Are there any overlaps here? Does this, uh, does, this, um, does this finding kind of ring any bells for you or does, does it uh, drum up any type of interest or questions? If it does, let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you later.